Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to hear some fun facts and quick tips about the Disney Skyliner. Launched in September of 2019, this gondola system joined other free Disney World transportation options of buses and ferries, but by featuring Disney characters on almost every cabin and giving you access to unique views, this ride feels more like an attraction than a way to get from point A to point B. So let's start flying and subscribe for more videos like this one. Tip number one, keep an eye out while in line. And if you see a gondola with characters you really like coming up, or one with a fully unobstructed view, don't be shy. Ask to wait to ride it. The cast member agrees you'll be able to wait on the side and then hop on. Let's talk about strollers. The opening is wide enough to fit most strollers, and in fact, each cabin is meant to fit 10 people or six if you have a stroller, ECV, or wheelchair. If you are on a wheelchair or riding an ECV, there are gondolas in place for you. Just ask a cast member who will guide you and the cabins join the line via a switch track. In fact, the Skyliner is the only double loading gondola system in North America. Tip number two. If you don't want the wind to tangle your hair, wear a hair tie or even better, a mini headband. There is no AC, but each gondola has six open vents. Trust me, when the cabins start going, the breeze gets a flowing, and though it will make for some fun photos, you might need a brush at the end. Tip number three. The gondolas rarely stop, but they might for a short time, so if you're afraid of heights or enclosed spaces, consider that it moves at speeds of up to 11 miles per hour and reaches a height of 60 feet above the ground. It crosses over rooftops, water, and roads to reach the parks and hotels. If an emergency does occur, there is a kit under the seats. This includes a glow stick, water, waste disposal bags, and a pencil and notebook. Tip number four, go visit Boardwalk after you get off on the Epcot stop. You'll be transported back in time as it was designed to look like a turn of the century boardwalk for a seaside town. There's also a gem of a little bar there, but more about that in a future video. Speaking of design, every stop has a particular look and feel influenced by each location. The whole project cost $33 million, and when you stop to admire the architecture and engineering, you can really see how. This six miles of cable takes about 300 cabins to four resorts and two parks, specifically Hollywood Studios and Epcot. The journey time for a one-way journey along the full route from Caribbean Beach to Epcot is 11 minutes. A journey between Caribbean Beach and Riviera takes about 3 minutes, and the journey between Riviera and Epcot takes about 6 minutes. Keep in mind that does not factor in queue times. Caribbean Beach Resort is a hub where you get off to take other connecting lines, and there's one turn station for the line to change directions. Note that this isn't like the monorail, so when you reach the end of the line, you'll have to get off to take a new cabin back. Tip number five, if you know there's gonna be lightning that day, seek an alternate route. The Skyliner will close down if the weather is too bad. Sorry it wasn't a happy tip, but we want you to be prepared. During possible hurricanes, the gondolas are even removed and stored until it's safe to open again. Tip number six, if you're not sure where to find the station, you'll be able to find it on the My Disney Experience app under Transportation, and it will give you walking directions to the locations. All in all, the Skyliner was a great way for Disney World to expand transportation options and add a new themed ride that's both free and fun. We hope in the future there's a way to expand to new destinations, such as Disney Springs. What stops would you like to see? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future info from us here at Florida Days and Nights.